Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we'll be covering some more lore from Dark and Darker. That's right, my original video talking about Amara and the health shrines got over 50 likes, and as promised, I'm delivering. I'm going to go into the numerous details of another shrine found in game, known as the Shrine of Protection. Who is the figure we see in game? wielding the powers of protection, where did these shrines come from and does their existence lend themselves to something much more sinister that we did not pick up on? Let's dive into that. So the figure represented by the shrine is known as Salorn. Salorn's origins are shrouded in the myths. According to ancient texts and religious scriptures, she is said to be the creation of a benevolent celestial council, tasked with preserving the balance of the cosmos, born from the first rays of a golden sun and the purest breath of the heavens. She embodies the essence of protection and guardianship. So Lauren's emergence into the world was a response to a time of great turmoil. In the mythology, the mortal realm, known also as the physical plane, was plagued by chaos and strife. Creatures of malevolence and darkness wrought havoc upon the world and its denizens. The Celestial Council then decided to bestow a divine protector upon the world, and thus Solorn was born. She descended from the celestial realms, her radiant wings unfurled, and her very presence seemed to calm the turbulent world, ushering in an age of peace. Bestowed upon her by the Celestial Council were three gifts of power. The radiance of Celestials, her eyes of compassion, and most notably her crimson halo, to which we see in-game at the Shrines of Protection, albeit in a lesser form. So Lauren's radiance of celestials was a blinding aura that she could emit from her very being, judging the wicked and damned and purifying all that was before her. Whilst her eyes of compassion held the depth of the cosmos, reflecting a profound and unwavering compassion for the inhabitants of the mortal realm. It is said that a mere glance from her can pierce the darkness of despair and offer a mere mortal an abundance of hope befit of a god. Her true power, however, resides in her crimson halo. In her hand she carries said crimson halo, a manifestation of her protection. This radiant red aura represents the divine shield that she bestows upon her devotees. It is believed that this halo is an extension of her very essence and serves as a beacon of hope for those in distress. So Lorne represented much of the mortal realm, a guardian of the weak, tasked with the role of watching over the vulnerable and oppressed, intervening in times of great need or calamity, offering her divine protection to shield those in need, whether it's a lost traveler, a besieged city, or a child in peril. Salorn is said to appear at their side, with her mere presence banishing fear and offering a warming comfort. Salorn herself is in an ever-perpetual state of vigilance, tirelessly watching over the world and its inhabitants. She is believed to stand at the gates of both the mortal and the celestial realms, ensuring that the forces of darkness cannot encroach upon the realm of mortals. Try as she may, her connection to the physical plane was waned ever so slowly as time has marched forward. As for the followers of Salorn, the connection with her followers is mystical and deeply personal. Those who seek her protection often report a sense of warmth and serenity when in her presence. Her divine blessings often conveyed through the crimson halo are a source of strength and fortitude. Shrines and statues dedicated to Salorn are scattered throughout the land. 
These sacred places are often found in areas of danger or uncertainty, serving as beacons of hope and respite for those in need. Worshippers visit these sites to offer prayers and seek her divine favor, many of which dot the decrepit ruins or dungeons adventurers find themselves desperately in to fuel their greed. On special occasions, followers of Salorn gather in mass to honor her. These ceremonies involve lighting candles and incense, along with the offering of prayers for protection. During these rituals, her devotees may invoke her blessings, asking for her guidance and safeguarding in times of crisis. It is said that there are three artifacts blessed by Salorn, perhaps nothing more than mere myths. The Sword of the Guardian, the Shield of Salorn, and the Guardian's Tear. The Sword of the Guardian is a legendary weapon said to have been forged by the gods themselves and imbued with Salorn's divine blessing. It is believed that during a dire battle against a horde of malevolent creatures that threatened the very fabric of the world, Salorn descended to aid the mortals. With a single touch of her crimson halo, she transformed an ordinary blade into a weapon of unparalleled power. This sword has since become a symbol of hope and protection passed down through generations to the bravest and most noble of heroes. According to the historians of the world, there is no true account of the blade, but there are many legends which call back to this ancient and powerful weapon. Another popular tale tells of a small village threatened by a fearsome dragon. As the villagers prepared for their doom, a figure brandishing an ordinary shield presented themselves to face the dragon alone. So Lorne, touched deeply by the bravery of the individual, descended from the heavens, bearing her crimson halo. So Lorne's imbued the shield with her divine protection, which not only shielded the village from the dragon's flames, but also tamed the beast, making it a guardian of the village for generations to come. Lost to time, there have been no records of this shield to be found only whisperings of babbling sorcerers and drunkards. Finally, however, the last and final item which is said to be lost in an unknown ancient ruin, guarded by an evil so foul that not even light can escape it, the Guardian's Tear. It is said that when Solorn sheds a tear, it turns into a radiant gem known as the Guardian's Tear. Possessing one of these tiers is believed to grant exceptional protection and guidance, and many adventurers had embarked on quests to find these rare and precious relics. But King Garlamond, a king of much power, sway, and influence of his time, had sought to collect the tiers as mere trophies of his excellence. The hubris of the king stirred a deep anger in Salorn, and upon realizing her power was misused, she cursed the power he sought to steal, and for every tear he held, a horrific illness befell him. Maggots which burrowed themselves into his skin, blood and bile oozing from every orifice, blindness and auditory hallucinations which ultimately led to his death. The tears in his possession turned pitch black, and upon his passing, they shattered. The Celestial Council stripped so Lorne of her powers. But before they could do such a thing, a final and single tear shed fell from her cheek and into our world, set to contain the truest essence of Solorn's mercy and deep regret. Wrought of her powers and banished to the mortal realm, she remained trapped, disguising herself to spread what protection and blessing she could to atone for her sins, as her powers of before left her undying. The power within the Shrines of Protection waned, nearly shadows of the former protections that used to exist. Evil and darkness returned slowly, albeit surely. So there you have it guys, the Tale of Salorn, the Guardian Angel, and that is what these Shrines of Protections actually have in terms of an origin story. 
If you enjoy my content guys and you want to see another lore video, let's get this one to 75 likes for me to make another one. I'm raising the bar this time and I'll continue to do so because I need to know you all want to see more of this. As always, I appreciate all of the support, so make sure to leave a comment on what you thought, subscribe if you haven't, and you can support me further by becoming a member of the channel by hitting the join button below. Thank you for watching and have a wonderful rest of your day.